I decided to come to Oregon State for a number of reasons. When I came down on my visit, uh, I met with the baseball coaches uh, first off, and Dan Spence, Dan Spencer, and Marty Lees, and Coach Casey, they were all really welcoming to me, and they just showed me uh, the same kind of style that I'm always used to, and that's hard working and, and uh, kind of just developing into a family atmosphere. I like the Northwest, I like the rain a little bit, and uh, you know, I, I like being out, out in the woods, in the green. So staying close to home was kind of what I wanted to do. And uh, after taking a tour through campus, I knew that it, this was something I really wanted to be a part of. I could kind of feel the, the, the togetherness, the atmosphere that was around Oregon State. So I knew that this was a spot for me, not a busy city like LA or anywhere down in Florida or something like that. I need to be up here where everyone's just kind of together in more of a family environment. The best thing I can give you about winning back-to-back -back championships was, you know, that, that no one believed in us. And we defied all odds and went out with not as good talent as everybody else. And we did it playing with our hearts and playing together as a, a family group. And, you know, after we won the first year, some of the guys took off and said, ah, you know, let's leave on a high note. I said, oh, I'm going to stick around. I'm going to see if we can do it again, because I got a good feeling we will. And sure enough, you know, it ended up happening. So I think the second one was, was just as good, if not better, because, you know, it proved to people that, you know, it wasn't a fluke. I mean, we were someone, we're someone to contend with. And just because you're from, you know, the Northwest and you're not from a, you know, a sunny neighborhood and it rains a little bit, that mean you can't work hard and indoors and, and compete with the, with the other top schools in the country. My experience here at Oregon State probably prepared me for professional baseball uh, because of the coaching staff and because the whole college atmosphere where you have to wake up, go to weights, then go to class, and then come back, you know, do your homework, write a paper, 12-page paper, communicate on group projects, uh, communicate with your professors, find a way to, you know, get your team together and get ready to compete. I mean, all, all these things come into play and it's, when you get out in the, in the real world outside of college, you know, it kind of makes it seem a little bit easier because you're used to going through the ground, you're used to waking up and doing things that, uh, you know, people that just skip college aren't used to doing. This is something that I, I'm blessed to, to been a part of. And when I talk to guys in pro ball that just came straight out of high school, it's kind of like, you know, they all listen to my stories and the other guys' stories and they're like, man, I really, I really missed out on something special. And, you know, I mean, anyone who's been to college and had a chance to compete at a Division One level or any level could probably say the same thing. One thing my dad always told me was, it's not what you have, it's what you can give. And that's something I really pulled together when I was here and tried to, you know, instill in the other baseball players is that, you know, people in the community here are giving to us a lot. You know, they're, they're, they're you know, putting uniforms on our back and helping us out and, and coming to cheer us on. Why can't we give back to, to them and their kids, you know? So we did things like we did a Halloween haunted house and carnival with all the other athletes. Every, there's a couple athletes from every team that helped out. Um, we did uh, Habitat for Humanity, building houses. We also um, did a few concerts, put together a couple concerts for the Special Olympics, which was a lot of fun. Uh, raised money, did it on a Friday night so that, you know, it keep people out of trouble. And, you know, it brings people closer together, you know, at OSU and gives them some stuff to do and also with the community. I bought a house here in Corvallis because I. W I want to be part of Beaver Nation and the OSU community. When I was here, I had I had such a great time, and you know, and, and the people all treated me like like I was, you know, part of a, you know, part of their family or or you know, just a good friend. No one here really treated me poorly, and that's something I I really want in my life. You know, positive thoughts, positive people around me, and that's something I got for the for the four years I was here. You know, why wouldn't I want to live here and 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 be part of that? further on and, and, and root for the teams down the road. I mean, this is gonna be something that, 
you know, I'm always going to want to be a part of and come back and and just remember the good times when I was here. But you know, this this OSU atmosphere is something that you're not going to get anywhere else. My parents immigrated to the U.S. Um, somewhere in the 80s. I'm not sure the exact date, but they've been, been here for about 16 to 18 years. Um, they came from Afghanistan. So it was like a long journey. I know the whole story, but yeah, it was a long ways. What's driven me to be a biology major um, was when I was a kid, I just always, always um, liked to figure out why things were working the way they did and um, just try to answer those types of questions. So when I realized that I wanted to be a doctor, um, this was the best way to do it, biology, figuring out why this is the way that things are. Um, so yeah, that's the path I chose. What surprised me most about OSU is um, the willingness of like, everybody to help you out, you know, being an athlete, you, they really stress getting good grades and um, being about school, and there really is a network behind you to make sure you achieve those goals. So I was surprised by that. My overall experience at OSU um, was rocky at first because I'm so close with my family, and, um, but it eventually won me over. Like, I just came back from a trip from you know, my hometown, and I couldn't wait to get back here. Why? Probably just because of the, like, calm, laid-back way of life over here. And um, the college town, you know, football games, everybody has tons of fun at those. So I just like the atmosphere a bunch. I chose to become a Spanish major when I came here because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I know that in four years I want to go back home and there's a really high demand for bilingual speakers. And I've always been, I like Spanish and I have, um, my step family's from Mexico, so I've always been exposed to Spanish. But the problem with Spanish is that in order to get into the degree, there's about three years of one sequence class you have to take for three years. So to fill the time, I decided to go with sociology and I picked sociology because that was what interested me. Spanish is the major I know I'll use, but sociology is what I picked because it's the most interesting. In the sociology department, they actually just opened up the crime and justice option, and that's what my area of focus is, because like I said, that's what I find the most interesting. But this last summer, I had the chance to be part of the Inside Out program, which is a program up at the Oregon State Penitentiary. And it's um, taught by Michelle Enderbitson, and she pairs 15 students from Oregon State with 15 inmates. And it's taught like a normal class, but the class is actually up at the prison. And in the class, we, um, we have books and we write essays, but at the same time, we're working with the inmates to develop a prevention strategy. And the prevention strategy that we developed this last summer is actually going to be implemented at the Oak Creek facility, which is the women's prison here in Corvallis. The program that we work to develop is aimed at the women who are in prison, who have children outside of the prison. What we plan to do is to go in and um, train these mothers to talk to their children in ways that they can connect through a DVD by reading them a book, and then after that, we'll take the book and the DVD of the mother and deliver it to the child. So then by doing this, it's recreating a positive role model and maintaining that bond because it's more likely that that mother will be out someday and she can go back to her children and that bond will still be there. The Inside Out program was a really awesome experience because you got to see things through the eyes of the inmates. You learned a lot about all the different measures and just the prison system in general. A lot of people have their minds made up about the prison system and the way things are, but most people don't really know how it is. So working with them and seeing that definitely has changed my mind about a lot of things.
Working with the prison system and the crime and justice options has been a completely different experience. It's a feeling that I never expected, something I didn't even imagine myself doing. But by doing it, it's, I really enjoy it and I have a passion for it. I, I, I've always said that I wanted to help people and then I think that by working with the prison system is a way that I can do that.